You know what? You know what? I I think I'm about to make another WrestleMania's video. <laughs> yo, remember his daughter was being a little slut and shit, yo. <laughs> yo, that bitch. Yo, I, I gotta find a video of her, yo. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. Hold on, fuck it. Let's watch this shit, then. I don't want to waste y'all. I already wasted enough of y'all time. I ain't going to waste too much. Let's go. Our first artist was Curtis Blow. We currently represent like 40, maybe 40 artists. <laughs> We've currently represented like 40, maybe 40 artists. <laughs> it's less. Oh my God, it was bad then. We currently represent like 40, maybe 40 artists. Maybe 40, maybe 40 artists. Including Curtis Blow, Houdini, yeah, uh, Curtis Blow, DC Boys. Boy. Is Russell Simmons. <laughs> I be damned. That nigga managed me, yo. He say my name like that. Fuck no, you cannot say my stage name like that. I can't. <laughs> I be fucking damned. Oh my God. Damn, he was losing his hairline back then. Shit, boy. Oh my god, you what? <laughs> what an ugly bastard. He <laughs> ugly as hell. Damn, the idiot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Yo, that's so. <laughs> what the fuck is that head? <laughs> that's a bucket head, yo. No. Damn, oh my god. Why does it look like that? <laughs> That's when they probably thought the fisherman shit was cool and shit. The niggas was been in there. <laughs> I can't do it probably with this nigga, bro. I can't. Founder and former CEO of Def Jam Records. I can't do this During shit. During his early bro. years, he managed many wow. notable artists such as Curtis oh, Blow, man. LL Cool J, Run DMC, The Beastie Boys. That is what hideous Warren. dude, His bro. resume spans over 40 <laughs> years, and he's been incredibly successful That's across multiple <laughs> industries. A hip-hop mogul, serial entrepreneur, and big-time yoga. <laughs> he looks <laughs> Reputation and legacy took a turn oh, for the worse back in 2017 when 13 women accused him of sexual assault, <laughs> sexual harassment, and <laughs> rape. Simmons has vehemently denied these accusations and has kept a low profile ever since uh, resigning as CEO of Def Jam and relocating to the island of Bali. Many of the alleged incidents took place at the very beginning of his career, starting oh, in the early 80s. A PDF, uh... If he was around there, the birth of hip hop, yeah, 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 yeah. he was one for sure. Nobody lasts that long. Simmons was already well established in the emerging hip hop industry. He worked as a promoter and was managing several acts. If you owned a club and wanted a hip hop act, Simmons was the guy to call. It all started one night in 1977 when he first heard an artist named MC Eddie Chiba rapping in a nightclub. I walked in Charles Gallery in Harlem. You know, the rapper by the name of Eddie Chiba. He was spitting rhymes and people were responding to him. He said, who make it sweeter? Chiba, Chiba, Chiba. This was his first time discovering hip hop and he described it as witnessing the invention of the wheel. From there, he would become immersed in the culture, throwing parties and hosting events, looking to network with up and coming rappers. Simmons attended the City College of New York in Harlem and it was there where he met fellow student Curtis Walker, also known as Curtis Blow. It was 1979 and the hit record Rapper's Delight was making its way through the airwaves. Here's Wonder Mike, Hank, and Master G, the Sugar Hill Gang. The record was deemed as hip hop's yeah, first official hit, yeah, yeah, and Simmons was there for his inception. I forgot exactly what it was. It was a hip to the hop to the hip to the hop to the hip to the hop. Hopes of securing a record Some shit like that. to generate interest. New York people know. Fuck out of here. It's your job to know that old club. goofy After shit. After making its rounds, they started gaining traction as record companies began receiving calls inquiring about the song. It was Polygram Records that would go on to sign the MC to a deal. The song would be released in 1979 and went on to sell more than 500,000 copies. <laughs> Yeah. 
Jam started out as a company um, in my dorm room. Um, we started about a year ago, made good records. Um, we just got um, a label deal with CBS, Columbia Records, out of money for a whole lot of money. It's 1982, and Simmons' younger brother Joseph, also known as Rev Run, formed a hip hop group with his friends Daryl DMC McDaniels and Jason J. Master J. Mazel. Simmons would help co produce their first two records titled It's Like That and Sucker MCs. The group would secure a record deal with Profile Records, and their debut album in 1984 became the first ever rap album to be certified gold. With the success of the first LP in America, is Run DMC's music a compromise to capture a mass white audience? Uh, we just make what we like to make and you know usually what we like a lot of other people like also so whatever we feel we want to make we just go ahead and make it and if it's successful then we're glad in 1983, Simmons met an aspiring... Back when real music was real music, man. ...named Rick Rubin at a man that crazy. They were polar opposites as Simmons was a savvy hustler from Queens and Rubin was a punk rock hippie from the suburbs of Long Island. But the two ultimately hit it off. They both would become equal partners in Rubin's new label called Def Jam, which he had been running from his dorm room in NYU. Def Jam's first hit would come with a young 16-year-old named LL Cool J that they had signed. The song was titled I Need a Beat and it allowed them to secure a distribution deal with Columbia, becoming the first independent hip-hop label to secure such a deal. Success only continued as Def Jam quickly became a multi-million dollar label and Simmons would continue to exceed in other endeavors. In 89, he co-founded the Simmons Laban Media Group, creating hit TV series such as Def Comedy Jam and Russell Simmons Presents Def Poetry. In 92, he launched his clothing line, Fat Farm, which he went on to sell for $140 million. Other ventures included Rush Communications, Unirush Financial Services, Baby Fat, and Tantris Yoga Studios, to name a few. With this, Simmons became the one who set the blueprint for other future hip-hop pop moguls to follow in his footsteps. All in all, Simmons was very much well liked by everybody in the industry. He was considered a founding father in hip hop and was very much a media darling as he presented a clean image, heavily promoting his yogi and vegan lifestyle and was also a very active father to his two daughters. He had developed a great reputation amongst his peers and he was still very active in his businesses. But everything took a drastic turn in 2017 when his life and legacy would change forever. Uh oh. I did not want to come forward. It was Spaghetti, the last uh, thing I want to do. Everyone geez, said, beautiful. don't do it. Fuck. It's going to ruin your life. And I felt like no matter what I said, nobody was going to hear us. You ain't got a rape it, though. I, look, I wanted for 22 to. 22 years. It all started in November of 2017 not, not when Simmons was the first one. Yeah, I, damn, he raped all them forever. bitches. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh, my God. I did not want to come forward. It was the last She's thing I wanted beautiful. to do. Everyone said, don't do it. It's going to ruin your life. And I felt like no matter what I said, nobody was going to hear us. Oh, wow. I was helping him cover it up. For 22 years. Yeah, it, it all started what in November of 2017 doing, when Simmons was accused of sexual what are you misconduct doing, by bro? model oh Carrie Caligi. The model stated that the assault occurred in 1991 when she was just 17 years old. Her Why? and Simmons went out to dinner that night along with Simmons' protege at the time, Brett Ratner, as part of a casting call. After dinner, Simmons invited Caligi to his apartment to show her a music video they've been working on. When she arrived, Simmons began to make unwanted sexual advances. He would continue to pressure and coerce Caligi to perform sexual acts, and she stated that he briefly penetrated penetrated her without consent. She said all of this occurred while Ratner simply sat and watched it all happen. Simmons would deny the accusation, saying that the encounter was completely consensual and with Carrie's full participation. Just a couple weeks after the first accusation, on November 30th, writer Jenny Lumet wrote a column for the reporter titled, Russell Simmons Sexually Violated Me. In the column, she detailed that in 1991, the then 24-year-old writer was offered a ride home from Simmons, stating, I got into the car with you. The driver began to drive. I assumed you knew where I lived because you had sent me 250 balloons, but I gave the driver my address on 19th Street and 2nd Avenue. You said to the driver, no. I didn't understand, so I said, Russell? I said again to the driver, 19th Street. Again, you said to the driver, no. Then the car door is locked. It was loud. The noise made me jump. She continued to write that when they arrived, she was essentially frozen in fear, and so she simply did what she was told. In the column, she continues to say, I never told anyone this story until October 27th of this year, after the Harvey Weinstein story was in the news, but weeks before the first public claims were made against you, when I told a girlfriend from childhood. As things began to snowball in the press, Simmons decided to step down uh -oh. from his various businesses. He raped a white bitch. He is On crazy. December 13th, the New York and LA Times reported that four of the had accused Simmons too. of rape and incidents spanning from 1983 
in 1996. And there's other five too, describing incidents of sexual misconduct with some as recently as 2016. None of them are cute. What in the fuck? I take well, I take it back. Whatever I said about that first. And another five women described that that other angle is just. Some as recently as 2016. None of them got eyebrows, bro. Come out with claims of sexual assault against. Damn, though. And being under investigation and his reputation going down the drain. Simmons would ironically. I ain't saying rape, but yeah, yeah. But damn. Now many are speculating that he clearly left. You want to say fuck it all? At least, considering like, the country doesn't have any extradition treaty with the United States. But Simmons persists on his reason for being there is to simply continue his journey of enlightenment and to continue his yoga studies. So you know I'm back and forth. <laughs> so this person called me and said to me, "They think you're hiding." <laughs> Can't what they think. <laughs> this is we have to separate ourselves from the <laughs> idea they think. Anyway. Simmons would lay low for a while as the controversy would die down a bit, but things quickly resurfaced when in January 2020, filmmakers Amy Ziering and Kirby Dick released a documentary about the alleged assault titled she got on pretty the It would premiere at the Sundance Film Festival and would eventually get picked up and released on HBO Max. The documentary tells the story of Drew Dixon, right, who worked she's as beautiful. an A&R and executive she's at Def Jam during the 90s. In the yeah. film, she shares that he would often she's sexually beautiful. harass her during her years at the record label. I went, it started you know, off with him trying to kiss Dixon, beautiful. but then it got so bad that he would actually go into her office, lock the door, and expose himself. All right, bro. Tell that many people. Kanye did that, yo. And you just grabbed me. Recently, right? You just grabbed me. And I'm saying no. I was reduced to nothing in that moment. The film also goes into she depth beautiful. about the misogynistic culture that formed during that era where harassment in the workplace <coughs> was essentially commonplace. And in order for women to get ahead career-wise, they often had to uncomfortably play along with unwanted sexual advances from powerful men. That's y'all fault. He needs to maintain a low profile. Y'all dirty. Like, stop being a whore. But even with his efforts to steer clear from any attention, it wouldn't last long as his family drama would make the news. In 2021, Like, Simmons men don't get discriminated against when we don't do exactly Simmons what we told. It's the same shit for everybody. Stocks. They had in the energy drink company Celsius. Yeah, yeah. yeah let, let me stick my for her new husband, inside Baker, you, but still. Laysner's bail fees. Lesnar was facing jail time when he pled guilty for scamming almost four billion dollars from people in Malaysia. Shit, Simmons would ultimately lose the court battle and was ordered as to as pay hundred thousand dollars in legal fees. Most recently on Father's Day of 2023, the Simmons family drama took to social media and it involved the couple's two daughters, Ming and Aoki. It started with an Instagram mm -hmm. post uploaded by Ming on June 18th where she wished her His mother a happy Father's Day. This would lead to a string of back and forth his online daughters. between her and her father, where Simmons responded with a post dating. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's do some, like, yeah. The wife is top tier, right? On top June tier. 18th, where she wished her mother I can't say father. nothing bad this about that, This would lead to a string right? of back and forth. Daughters. <clears throat> I think the one that, that they got caught, like, dating the 60-year-old nigga. <laughs> I think that's the younger one, right? The the schedule one, I'm assuming it's the younger one. I like them both for real. But the oldest sister is the thicker one a thousand times. Like, I mean, a thousand times. Like, it, but she's so beautiful. I dated her. I wouldn't even think about her sister. <laughs> I, you know. Online between her and so her father. So it is levels. Responded with a post dating. Stop telling fathers they should have fought hard. He, you know, he, he, got, he got his moments where he, you know, he know what he's doing. And then, you know, by the time he's fucking up. mothers why he had to fight it all. Shortly after the subliminal messages, Aoki would add to the fire by posting a music Aoki's video. Aoki's beautiful in her face, though. Like, her her face, face is gorgeous. Now, with his family drama being aired out on social media, apparent financial troubles, and history of allegations, Simmons' legacy has clearly taken a hit. From beloved hip-hop godfather Uncle Rush to alleged sexual predator, it's sad to see the series of events that have occurred. As a businessman and visionary, what he's accomplished over the years is remarkable. But if he is indeed guilty of these allegations, we only hope that he expresses remorse Bad. and remorse. Toward becoming a better human being. Well, <sighs> bad. Uh, he escaped me too. <laughs> I'm fucking around watching this too. My face is the same shit, bro. Russell Simmons, Will Smith. Why Will Smith wrote me a check for two hundred fifty thousand? What the fuck? Do Do we go into this random loophole? I thought it was about to be some book. You know it no. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> like so, doing other shit.